If you saw the title of this video and thought that I'm going to give you a play-by-play -play recap of the 2022 Qatar World Cup Finals that happened on December 18th, I am sorry to tell you that that is not what I will be doing. Because number one, it will take forever to walk through the entire nail-biting game that went all the way to the final penalty shootouts, in which Argentina defeated France. And number two, it is far more important to recognize those who made this nail-biting game and the matches that preceded it possible in the first place. I am specifically referring to the members of the FIFA organization, the largest international governing body of football established in 1904, who ran one of the most immaculately sneaky bribing schemes in the sports world that would make any person with morals or a conscience throw up and the migrant workers who were forced soon thereafter to take part in an entrapping system of forced labor, a euphemism for modern day slavery, in order to construct a series of billion dollar projects in one of the richest, fastest developing countries in the world. Projects, I must add, that should take decades, but were built in just 12 years. Now I'm sure you're wondering, how did all of this happen? Who concocted this maniacal plan? And how did no one hear about it? Let's take a deep dive into the atrocities of the 2022 Qatar World Cup. Our unfortunate story begins in 1964 when FIFA made its most corrupt move yet. Now don't get me wrong, FIFA officials had already dipped their toes in the world of bribery, but by removing a major check and balance from the larger FIFA organization and restricting all voting rights to a smaller group was a complete nosedive. When there was a massive boost in member countries of FIFA, the organization decided to divide the countries up into six confederations. Before the major decision was made, the General FIFA Congress, which had 144 members at the time, one representing every member country, voted for which country should host future World Cups, depending on who had placed their bids. This new action, however, gave all the voting power to the FIFA Executive Committee, or EXCO, which only had 24 members, consisting of the leaders of the six regional confederations and other top officials, like the President. What is especially concerning is that only a simple majority of 13 votes was necessary to decide the final host country, making bribery much more easier at a larger scale. FIFA had also moved their headquarters to Zurich, Switzerland, a country where, due to governmental laws and regulations, corporate finances could not be traced. This made it even more difficult for governmental officials to research the corruption within FIFA. Oh my god, this is atrocious. This is simply a wrongdoing. This is... <laughs> and if you thought this is crazy, like Benny, please don't pass out yet because it only gets scarier and more blood boiling. After the 1964 decision, corruption was rampant from many members, and the practice became deeply rooted in FIFA's culture. The bids to host the 2006 World Cup, however, marked a whole new milestone for this ignoble organization. After FIFA began seeking hosts outside of South America and Europe, where most World Cups had been hosted until then, many more countries submitted their bids. In fact, a gargantuan total of five countries showed great interest in hosting the 2006 World Cup. England, Germany, Brazil, Morocco, and South Africa. With this high-stakes competition came many more additions to what it takes to earn the EXCO members' votes. Within the span of the bidding war that lasted two years, the country spent millions of dollars on PR events, plans for new stadiums, and more reliable transportation infrastructure. Through this, FIFA unintentionally created a public bidding system in which countries had to constantly seek approval from the general public and EXCO members, giving the richest countries a simple opportunity to bribe their way to victory in this bidding war. It also caused the politicization of football and led to FIFA meddling in public policy. But most importantly, it revealed the beginning of a new era of bribing. 
Although Germany had won the 2006 bidding contest with 12 out of 24 votes and one abstention, years later news was leaked that they had bought four of the votes, including the abstaining member. This bribery recurred in the bidding contest for the 2010 World Cup between Morocco, Egypt, and South Africa. Allegations were later uncovered that South Africa had paid millions of dollars in bribes to FIFA officials for their votes. All of this leads up to the main focus of today's topic, December 2nd, 2010. On this day, the FIFA Exco voted on and announced the 2018 and the 2022 World Cup host countries. The 2018 bid was between four European countries and joint ventures. England, Russia, Spain and Portugal, and Belgium and Netherlands, with England's reliable infrastructure systems and economic stability making it a favorite. Similarly, the 2022 Cup bid saw the US far ahead of Australia, South Korea, Japan, and Qatar in terms of votes. The infrastructure aspect, however, only seemed to make a minor impact as the money spent in the public bidding process explained earlier seemed to sway the FIFA Exco the most. Due to this factor, Russia defeated England to host the 2018 World Cup by pledging $10 billion to invest in 16 stadiums, money provided by Russian oligarchs like Roman Abramovich, the former owner of the Chelsea Football Club. Totally a coincidence. Two EXCO members also admitted to accepting millions of dollars in bribes from Russian officials in return for their vote for the 2018 host country bid. And if Russia's corrupt practices seem abominable, it is nothing compared to what Qatar did to win the bid for the 2022 World Cup. Qatar, a geographically small country in the Middle East, originally populated by nomadic tribes and fishing villages, had already taken advantage of the giant oil and gas reserves discovered in their neighboring ocean, allowing it to rise up the ranks from a country whose biggest export was pearl diving to one of the richest countries in the world. In fact, because they are host to the largest known natural gas field in the entire world, 70% of the Qatari government's revenue is rooted in oil and gas exports. Over the past few decades, the country has gone through a series of major reformations, with the prime example being their capital, Doha. The city started out as a small fishing port, but later became a city flourishing with extravagant displays of wealth. However, this growth is not expected to sustain much longer as countries start turning towards renewable sources of energy and many of their neighboring countries imposed blockades on Qatar in 2017 to cut off trade and travel, which cost them millions of dollars. In order to ensure that these factors don't hinder Qatar's economic growth and to diversify their economy, the government has begun involving the country into areas of soft power, and in this case, sports. By establishing Qatar's status as a prominent member of the sports world, they have strengthened relations with more powerful countries in the West, further expanding their influence. Ostensibly, in the last 18 years, Qatar has hosted 20 major sporting events, the most important being the 2022 World Cup. Now that we understand why the small, seemingly insignificant country needs so much influence for their economy, the rest is easy. The only way for Qatar to beat out their major opponents in the bidding contest, like the US, was to engage in bribery at a dangerous scale. And more importantly, there is one man who was behind putting the entire plan into action. Mohammed bin Hammam, a member of the 2010 FIFA Exco, who is also a major Qatari football administrator, was able to pull together a total of 14 votes, almost doubling the USA's mere 8 votes. While Hammam has never openly admitted to any business dealings with other Exco members, the FBI has launched several investigations to discover the exact terms and conditions for these meetings, how they took place, and who all was involved. Hammam's influence was even able to buy the vote of the European FIFA Confederation, UEFA's president, Michel Platini, who has a major say in many FIFA proceedings. With all of this support, Qatar was easily able to bribe their way into winning the bid for hosting the 2022 World Cup. But again, it does not stop here. Wait a second, we're still not done? No, Benny. 
you better hold on to your hats because this is where a series of even worse events occur and the victims are migrant workers. Once FIFA awarded Qatar the rights to host the 2022 World Cup on December 2nd, 2010, after multiple occurrences of bribery, the country had to fulfill their promise of making it the most lavish FIFA tournament ever, at a staggering total of $200 billion. Qatar was able to afford this due to their possession of the largest oil and gas reserves in the world, but money was not the problem. It was the labor, and somehow it was able to deliver this promise, building eight stadiums, dozens of hotels, many new transportation lines, and even a whole new tourist-centered city, all in just 12 years. As experts started diving deeper into this development phenomenon, the answer as to how they did it became clear. Migrant workers from all over their neighboring regions, like South Asia and East Africa. These people were the best type of employees as they were low paid and could easily be manipulated due to the large distance from their homeland. Ever since FIFA announced the winner of the hosting bid, Qatar has brought in so many workers that they now make up 80% of the total Qatar population. Now you might be wondering why these migrant workers would ever want to sign up for a job that would cause so much harm to them and their families. Researchers have dubbed this plan to recruit migrant workers as the Qatar Trap, consisting of six parts that make the offer seem somewhat enticing, but is inherently exploitative. It begins with a recruitment fee, in which the potential candidates had to pay money to Qatar in order to just get recruited as a pawn. As they already paid the money, they would have a negative incentive to leave. This leads us to the next section of the trap because these workers cannot afford to dip into their savings for these costly fees, so loaning from the bank is their only option, leaving their family in even more debt and forcing the workers to continue to work and pay off those debts. Upon arriving at Qatar, the workers get their passports taken away to ensure that they don't leave, and are forced to sign documents written in Arabic which they cannot read. And lastly, during the actual construction process, reports of worker conditions show that they are verbally abused by their bosses and are forced to work at dangerous sites, all while in the sweltering Qatar heat with an average of 99 degrees Fahrenheit during the summer. Also cases of wage theft have been reported, in which the project managers refuse to pay their workers until extreme work hours are accomplished. All of these portions of the Qatar trap have coalesced to form one massive corporate-minded juggernaut who conveniently forgets about the basic rights that humans should receive and only focuses on maximizing profits and global rankings, leading to far too many injuries and even deaths. In fact, the Qatar World Cup chief Hassan al Thawadi openly admitted to the debts of 400 to 500 migrant workers, but investigative sources like The Guardian finds this to be an understatement, estimating that number to be at 6,500. Holy whack-a-mole! Okay, okay. Worst comes to worst, families still have closure as to what happened to their loved ones, right? I mean, they have to. Apparently they don't, Benny because Qatar doesn't want the world to know what these poor migrant workers are going through. They list the cause of death as a vague heart failure. But that's how all of us die. My heart stopped, Georgie Washington's heart stopped, Tommy Jefferson's heart stopped. We need more specifics. Exactly. But if the Qatari government gave those specifics, then their atrocities would be exposed. Hence why the cause of death for 69% of those who died were listed as just natural causes. However, the unfortunate circle of life will continue. Now that the 2022 World Cup has ended in classic Hollywood film manner with an entertaining finals, Lionel Messi's retirement from future World Cups, Argentina, y, you know, somos, somos campeones del mundo and ardent fans from all over the world expressing their emotions for media attention. A lot of excitement is, uh, is, just a, is just a misunderstanding. You can see the, guy, the, 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 the sheer joy of celebration. Um, it's a triumph that the Argentina national team has been... ...has been sorry. Uh, we've been waiting for, for more than 36 years. Qatar got exactly what it wanted. 
millions of tourists, and an honorable place on the international stage. While there were some reforms that almost destroyed FIFA afterwards, like EXCO members getting banned and arrested, then FIFA president Sepp Blatter resigning in disgrace, and returning the vote for World Cup host back to the general FIFA Congress, the problem is that bribery occurred in the modern day right in front of our eyes and Russia and Qatar will get away from these allegations. And it's not just the bribery. Everyone will have forgotten the atrocities it took to build the extravagant facilities, elaborate transportation systems, and exorbitant tourist attractions for Qatar to rake in massive boosts to their economy and international ranking while the migrant workers who labored for hours in the scorching Arabian sun received nothing remotely close to what they deserve. Twelve years of hard labor, human rights violations, and modern day slavery just for 29 days of matches that are insignificant in the long run. These crises must be addressed before it sets precedent for future development plans. And the next time a major corruption scandal like this occurs, it is up to us everyday citizens to pull out the red card and stop FIFA and corrupt nations like Qatar from continuing the game. Please visit Amnesty International to see how you can play a role in preventing these crimes against humanity from happening again. Thank you for watching and I'll catch you in the next episode. Until then, stay safe and never forget those who died in the hands of corruption and modern day slavery.